Hey, what say we do a double lace sheath? All right, you've all seen me construct sheaths from scratch before, so I'm not going to bore you to death with those details. I'm just uh, going to get pieces cut out, punched and dyed, and, uh, and then we'll show you some of the highlights, what's different in this. This is a stag-handled Bowie, a uh, pretty long blade, and so I'm going to put a, a double loop lace on the edge to instead of just stitching it to give it a little bit more curb appeal. And uh, we'll see how it all comes out. All right. I hope you all don't mind that I double up the speed on the video. It just, there was a lot of steps that I normally kind of cut out and skip through that I wanted to to make sure that I show this really is a process and I'm not uh, <laughs> I'm not <clears throat> putting the uh, putting the batter in the oven and then five seconds later pulling a, a fully baked and decorated cake out of another oven one thing you watch out for when you're going through this is to make sure you don't stitch through your own strapping or cut it off when you whack your ankle all right, when it comes down to getting the holes in here, this is a, it's actually a lace um, stitching chisel. So they're elongated tines instead of the regular diamond shaped forks. Just make sure you're upright and vertical and follow that line. I did cheat this a little bit. I used some calipers to, to scratch a, a line in there about a, I don't know, maybe an eighth of an inch off the edge of the blade just to, uh, so I had a line to follow. It's it's groovy because that gets covered up as you uh, lace over the top. And so we'll get this cut up and then I'll, uh, we'll get it punched out and then I'll, I'll trim along that line because where I'm putting these holes is gonna be very close to my edge. I just wanna leave enough material outside of those holes to to hold the lace in place. Normally on your stitching pony you're going left to right or right to left. In this case I'm going to rotate it because I'm going to work from front to back. And whatever you decide to do, if that's easier for you or if you like working in the opposite direction, just maintain consistency and you'll be alright. The hardest part you're going to have uh, to deal with is, is all the excess material because this is seven times the length of the stitch in, uh, in lacing. and the orientation of that needle has to remain the same so you don't wind up with a bunch of twists in it because every time that lace turns it will show you can see I'm a little offset here uh, my back is down from my front so I'm gonna grab some needles and use them as like you know holders to pin that that sheath uh, and maintain alignment oh, well, drive me down Easiest thing to do is throw it over your shoulder, keep that excess out of the way. So just push forward through the first hole with these uh, with these particular lacing needles I'm using. One end is longer than the other. I put that on the bottom so that as I pull through and draw up, it kind of pins that lace in in the split needle. Leave yourself a tail end and where that forms a cross on your next um, on your next pass through you're going to go once through the hole and then once through the cross that you've created the little x shape so i'm going to go through this first hole twice and then <clears throat> i'm gonna i'll go through the through the cross on my second pass i'll try and give you an idea what that looks like in a little bit Maintain pressure on that needle, or that lace will pop right out and frustrate the tar out of you.
stars across the field are sparkling in your eyes. Drive me down the gravel road to that. Yep, there's a nice good loop. And when, uh, when you pull that tight, it shouldn't be twisting on you. And if it looks like it's gonna, don't just give it a tug. Make sure you, you straighten that out before you, you tighten anything down. But now I've created that cross for myself. And so I'm gonna, when I bring it back over the top, I'm gonna go into the cross that I've created on the, on the spine of the sheath. And it might take a little bit of a, a left right angle to get it through both of those pieces. Then once you got it, manage your cord as you pull through. And make sure that you're on the right side of the uh, of the lace and that you're not tying a knot for yourself. Don't penetrate your own loop-de-loop. -loop. Worst thing you can do in, when you're lacing these guys up is drop the needle and lose your orientation because then you'll in invariably wind up with a twist or two in there that you'll have to accommodate for later. So you just got to drop the needle grab that lace and work it all the way down from the from the sheath all the way to the needle to make sure it's a straight uh, a straight run this stuff will tangle as you're pulling through so you're gonna have to maintain that like I said keeping it over the shoulders <clears throat> helps keep it kind of straight there's a twist oh, get it out get it out there you go okay good that's nice and then you can torque it down once you get that out um, but then as you continue running this lace through these holes over and over and over and over again it kind of starts to form itself it flattens out all the imperfections and it's starting to straighten it out and, and it gives you it, it kind of has a memory for the for the motion as strange as that sounds and of course, as you proceed further down the sheath, then you got a lot less material to work with, so it gets easier near the end. Just push that loop over into place wherever you want it. And you can see I've got, you know, three or four passes into this thing, and that, that tail end has already locked itself in, so... There's no way the top end of the sheath is coming undone. And I'll show you how we lock it off at the back side when, when we get to the end of the run. If you wind up not giving yourself enough material, that's not really a big deal. It's just the same way as if you're style stitching. Just, um, you can pick up where you left off with a new piece, but um, you might just have to go back you know, one hole or one stitch, uh, one cross stitch to, uh, to blend it in. But if your intention is to do that, if you're like if you're going to go to the end, quit, and then pick it up on the other side um, with a brand new piece, that's that's fine because that'll save you yeah, quite a bit of aggravation of dealing with this long run, seven times the length. Um, I I think this just gives me a cleaner look, and so I fight with it and struggle, but I think it's all worth it in the end. One, two. One, two, three. Oh, drive me down the gravel road to that hoy oh well tonight in the glow of the radio. I said these things will tie themselves in knots I wasn't lying so quit what you're doing work that and then uh, once you get it broke free then you can continue just don't try and force it it's just it's like fighting with a knot in a rope the the more you tug at it the tighter it gets so just slow down back it out straighten everything out and then continue on one tip that I use is I'll poke my uh, needle into that hole as f as far as it needs to to pin the thread in into the split needle so it doesn't come popping out of there and it also maintains my orientation so I know which end is up and uh, I don't have to I won't lose track and have to come back and straighten the line out again 
All right, so here it is. I'm going through the hole, and then as I loop it back over the top, you'll see where I'm going to go through that cross that I've just created. Right there. And here we go, across the top. And that's what forms that, that double braid. One through the hole, one through the cross. One through the hole, one through the cross. Well, it's hard to know what's going down in this lonely little town. But if that steering wheel gets in our way, we'll lay a blanket on the ground. We'll drink and dance on the overpass of that old highway to nowhere. hardship for myself because I don't have a, a one or a two prong uh, stitching point or stitching uh, yeah prong whatever so I machined a, a mini flathead screwdriver down to the right dimension I, it is a little smaller so it puts a little extra torque on it which I guess since I use it at end runs that's not a bad thing necessarily but when you get to the to the very tip of this knife what I'm going to do, and you can see I'm getting real close to the edge there, I'm going to run through that last hole two times. Um, it's not so much a matter of strength, it's just a matter of, of getting the braid to round that corner at the tip. So it's, it's kind of a sketchy proposition, but basically I want to run one loop over the top and then one loop around the side. And in order to get all that to work out, it's going to take uh, it's going to take two on the on the last hole, which since they're already tight, man, it, it really does require a little bit of doing. All right, so there's my last loop that goes over the the top of that one side, and the next one I'm going to go around the the front corner. Problem is you got to maintain your needle orientation. So if you're going over the top with uh, with that one handing you got to remember not only am I going over the top this way but then I've also got to rotate it to the side it might help you to readjust the uh, the sheath in the pony and uh, it might make a little more sense to you You know, as far as time goes, if you're going to do one of these and you're on a timetable, you got to account for that. I can stitch up a sheath in about, you know, 30 minutes, give or take, of, of this size. Um, that includes, you know, poking the holes and, and threading the whole thing and finishing it off. But with, the, with this process, just because you got, you have so many stitches and... <clears throat> Per inch um, and you're going back one every time you take a step forward it does take a little bit longer so make sure you account for that this thing I did this over the course of two days so if you notice a change of clothes or if you notice some 
raindrops on me. That's <laughs> in between. <laughs> That's why. All right, we're rounding the corner here. And then once you get past that, that troublesome spot at the tip, then it, that process just continues. You're in through the hole, back around through the cross, in through the hole, back around through the cross. All right, we are nearing the end. I'm almost at the back of this run. At the uh, at the top of the sheath. I mean, look at that. Seven times the material, and, and look how close I ran to almost running out. That's all I got left, just three inches to play with. Run it through that last hole twice, and when you're on the back side, you're going to drive that needle and lace through the, the stitches on the back side. And just run it down the flat line of them. I go about five or six. Um, if it's not that tight, run more if you can get it. But that's that's about enough. I bend the sheath a little bit. My needle already has a natural curve in it, so it kind of tends to want to poke out anyway. So grab it, pull it on through, and cinch it down. And then uh, just snip off <clears throat> what remains as close as you can to the stitches and off it disappears. And there you have it.